Hello everyone, this is Kyle here, and today I'm going to be explaining what it truly means to be born again of water and spirit. Now first I want to examine John chapter 3 verse 5 in which uh, this whole question revolves around. John chapter 3 verse 5, quote, Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Now, before we proceed any further in trying to unpack what being born of water and spirit means, I'm going to give some context by reading John chapter 3 verses 3 through 4, just before verse 5. John chapter 3 verses 3 through 4, quote, Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can a person once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Now that we understand a little more about what it means to be born again, now let's try to unpack what it means to be baptized of water, and I will use examples on how John the Baptist describes his baptism. John chapter 1 verse 26, quote, John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize. And John chapter 1 verse 31, quote, I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. And John chapter 1 verse 33, quote, I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, on whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And now for some parallels in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, quote, I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So I want to pay attention here to the word but here. So the Greek word here is de, and doesn't necessarily mean a negating factor or an opposite of, hey, there's no more water in Jesus' baptism. This Greek word can mean moreover or and, and this will become very important uh, later. And also Mark chapter 1 verse 8, quote, I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. There are many things we can conclude from these passages I just mentioned. First, the obvious conclusion is that this is talking about baptism. And John's baptism with water was symbolic of repentance. And John also says that Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit as well as water. Thus, why Jesus says he needs to be, we need to be born of water and spirit. Here's more proof on why we need to be born of water and spirit. And this is taken from Jesus' own baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, quote, After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So clearly, we can see that he was literally in water, but the Spirit of God, obviously being the Holy Spirit, came upon him. So this is where we see a baptism of water and spirit. Now on a lesser note, but still very important to this discussion, Jesus commands everyone to be baptized. For example, in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 16, quote, He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. And we also see in a parallel in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, we are given the specific formula. Quote, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now back to my main point, what does being baptized of the Holy Spirit and water mean? We have seen that water symbolizes repentance, but what does the Holy Spirit have to do with baptism? Now I want to examine Titus chapter 3 verse 5 which says quote but when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared not because of any righteous deeds we had done but because of his mercy he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit now to examine this in a deeper way there are three words that are used here that require special attention lutro pelingenesias and anakinoseos so the first word is lutro which comes from lutron which literally means a bath or um, a baptism. So this is a literal bath, as I will show in a bit. But next, the next word that requires uh, much attention is pelingenesias, which comes from 
palignesia, which means a spiritual rebirth um, or a, a spiritual renovation. So this is essentially a new birth. And the next word that requires special attention is anakinoseos, which comes from anakinosis, which means a renovation or a renewing. So a better reading of Titus three five, uh, of Titus three five would probably be, he saved us through a bath of a new birth and a renovation or a renewing by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and to show that Lutron is talking about a literal bath of water, let's examine Ephesians chapter five verse twenty six. And the same Greek word is used here to describe a literal bath. Or as it says, a labor here. Let me read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Quote, that he might sanctify it, cleansing it by the laver lutro of water in the word of life. So now we see clearly from Titus 3 5 that there will be a new birth being born again and a renewal of the Holy Spirit by a literal bath of water. And the meaning of the water does change. Um, so instead of repentance, it becomes a true forgiveness of sins. And now let's read what Acts uh, chapter 238 has to say about this, where we see the first baptism after Christ died and resurrected. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, quote, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what do we see here? We see that a baptism is for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of sins, giving us a new birth and a renewing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming down upon us and us receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to show you some church fathers that state that baptism is a new birth with one receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and it being for the remission of sins. St. Hippolytus of Rome, Discourse on the Holy Theophany, AD 215, quote, But give me now your best attention, I pray you, for I wish to go back to the fountain of life and to view the fountain that gushes with healing the father of immortality sent the immortal son and word into the world which came to man in order to wash him with water and spirit and he begetting us again to incorrupting of soul and body breathed into us the breath spirit of life and endued us with an incorruptible panoply if therefore man has become immortal, he will also be God and if he is made God by water in the Holy Spirit after the regeneration of the laver he is found to be also joint heir with Christ after the resurrection of, from the dead. Wherefore, I preach to this effect, come all ye kindreds of the nations to the Im immortality of the baptism. I bring good tidings of life to you who tarry in the darkness of ignorance. Come to liberty from slavery into a kingdom of from tyranny into incorruption from corruption. And how saith one shall we come? How? By water and the Holy Ghost. This is the water in conjunction with the Spirit by which paradise is watered, by which the earth is enriched, by which plants grow, by which animals multiply, and to sum up the whole in a single word, by which man is begotten again and endued with life, in which also Christ was baptized, and in which the Spirit descended in the form of a dove. St. Augustine, Sermons to the Catechumens on the Creed, A.D. 395. Quote, in three ways, then, are sins remitted in the church, by baptism, by prayer, and by the greater humility of penance. Yet God does not remit, remit sins, but to the baptized. The very sins which he remits first, he remits not, but to the baptized. When? When they are baptized. Note, this is a, a while later. St. Thomas Aquinas, Summa Theologiae, Tertia Pars, Question 69, Article 1, A.D. 1265-1274, to quote, I answer that, as the Apostle says, all we who are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized in his death, and further on he concludes, so do you also reckon that you are dead to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord? Hence it is clear that by baptism man dies unto the oldness of sin and begins to live on to the newness of grace, but every sin belongs to the primitive oldness. Consequently, every sin is taken away by baptism. And again, St. Hippolytus of Rome, Apostolic Tradition, chapter 22, verse 1, AD 215, quote, Then the bishop laying his hand upon them shall pray, saying, O Lord God, who hast made them worthy to obtain remission of sins through the laver of regeneration of the Holy Spirit, send to them thy grace, that they may serve thee according to thy will, 
for thine is the glory to the Father and the Son with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and world without end. Amen. The Council of Constantinople I, Exposition of 150 Fathers, A.D. 381. I won't read all this for the sake of time, but I will read this line. Quote, we confess one baptism for the forgiving of sins. To summarize, we see that being born again of water and spirit means, one, the forgiveness of sins pertaining to water, and two, being renewed of being renewed with the Holy Spirit and receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All right, everyone, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that you will get notified when I post future videos and comment down below on any critiques or any suggestions um, for videos that you want me to make. That's all for today. See you next time.